how are you doing today? Great. How are you, Steve? Doing excellent. Um, Great. So I'm going to start with, uh, I, I guess when I was watching the movie, I started thinking to myself, um, is this like, were you, when you made this film, I just butchered my beginning. I was trying to, uh, when you made this film, were you thinking, um, I really wanted to know what would happen if the child from space had not landed um, from, and this would be like, you know, in an alt universe, this is what actually, this is another version of their lives. It's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> that was exactly my motivation. <laughs> what would have happened to the Kents if, uh, 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 no, not really, not really. But, no, but yeah. the, the thing about that film, Man of Steel is, yeah. they were great together. Um, yeah. they, they had great chemistry and obviously- No, they're, it's, they're ketchup and mustard. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You look at them together and it's obvious. Right. And, and so right. I wanted to know what I wanted to know is how early on in this process were you thinking about the two of them? Um, can you sort of share that? Sure. I, you know what, the, the thing I'll share is that I don't really think about actors while I'm writing because, because you never win the lottery like I actually did in this instance. So I, if I had allowed myself to dream, it would have been them, but I, I didn't. Um, you know, I, it, it's, Anyway, they're, I mean, I'm just, I got so lucky. I got so lucky. Com no, completely. Their, their chemistry together in that yeah. and in this is yeah. fantastic. And I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I need them to make more movies together. Right, right. You know, but, but actually- I'll go see them. Right, exactly. Yeah. But I'm, yeah. I am curious though, because Kevin Costner is such a good actor. Diane, obviously as well. But Costner is the type of uh, actor that people will watch almost anything he does. Yes. He's, he's one of those kind of actors. Yeah. So can you sort of share what it was like meeting with him for the for the first time, knowing, my God, I really want this person to be in my movie? Oh, no. And then uh, um, I'm going to say add on top of that the fact that I'm a huge fan. So, you know, you're going you, you it's sort of like going and seeing Mount Rushmore for the first time. It, it's a little awe striking. Um, but he was incredibly kind and I would also I, I really want to say sort of through the entire process like he's on top of being the spectacular actor you cite him as he's a brilliant filmmaker and yeah. he's like he's a brilliant director but he is also a consummate storyteller and he would I mean I'm just I'm grateful for his generosity to me in sort of going through the whole process with me and you know I, I between the two of them I mean their level of experience versus mine is anyway they were they were gentle they were gentle to me uh one of the things that I really liked about uh Costner's character is that he really doesn't speak a lot and he only right. speaks sort of when he has to yeah. um can you sort of talk about how early on um and I'm sure if that was in the book or like can, mm -hmm. can you talk about how early on you realized he was going to have like minimal dialogue and you know I, I knew right away it was sort of in in the in Larry Watson's spectacular novel um it, it was one of the things that really drew me I it, it was how even Margaret doesn't talk that much that they are it, it was it, the it was exciting to me the opportunity to paint a portrait of a marriage with all sort of behavioral subtext they don't talk a lot. You know, there's a scene where they they have just dropped their grandson off at his new home and they go home and she's standing by a sink and you never see her face and you know she's falling apart and he doesn't know how to reach out to her and there's sort of no dialogue. And it was, those were the scenes that were the most fun to do. And that they, and, and both Kevin and Diane knew the opportunities um, cause it's all about performance. It's as, as a writer, as a, as a director, my favorite scenes to direct are the ones where I've given you no dialogue. Uh, I'm always curious to talk to directors about the editing process because yeah. it is the final rewrite. Um, what did you learn from early friends and family screenings that impacted the finished film? Um, it's interesting because this is the third time I worked with Jeff, Jeff Ford, who it, it, I've, this is our third, he's my brother in arms. This is our third time together. Um, and he's done all the Avengers movies. Um, we, what did we, what did we learn early? Um, I think the, 
It wasn't a thing. I had, it was designed this way, was there's when, in the first five minutes of the movie, when they're, so I'm not giving anything away, when their son dies and Kevin finds him, it cuts to black. And then you're in their bedroom and Diane is tying Kevin's tie. And you think you're, they're going to a funeral. And then you realize they're going to this wedding of their daughter-in-law. And it was designed to be confusing that you would think it was a funeral. And then it's revealed to a second later that it's a wedding. And I, it was so gratifying when we did a test audience and it was a thing they, they weren't confused. They were confused. It was a pleasurable confusion that they, people liked the misdirect and it was, it was designed that way. So I felt vindicated. <laughs> right. Got it. Uh, you got uh, Giacchino to join you again. Yeah. Uh, do the score. Um, yep. At this, as, at this point, or is it uh, like you just text him and be like, please come back. Let's work together again. No, I, yeah. No, it's, it's um, I mean, it's sort of the, I'm, the you know the the brotherhood of the traveling pants with um it, it, with Michael and with Jeff Ford my editor where it's just when are you gonna have a script let's go let's go let's go let's do it I'm there um so I'm well, if you don't mind if you don't mind me asking I believe this is uh, Michael's first time doing a score like this it for, is yeah and, and so can you sort of talk about obviously he's such a gifted um yeah. composer but did you yeah. sense any sort of like different energy because this is a completely different genre for him. Sure. It was one of the things that Michael and I, it, it was, we were both excited about was how different it was for me, um, the genre. And then for him also, he had not done a Western before. And, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's an old composer, Stephen Forrester um, uh, composer and that you, you sort of hear, it, it feels very, Michael does this great, when we did Family Stone together, I always said it was, um, it's the Presbyterian piano that he he sort of does that. And this feel has that Americana, you know, it evokes that so masterfully. It, the, the trick was figuring out um, not to go too on the nose and have all guitar and then, um, so it's guitar and piano but he's Absolutely. i just you couldn't ask to work with anybody better oh he, he's a genius um yeah. on that note i already have to stop i'm just going to say congrats on the movie what happened to our time yeah i know it goes really really fast um yeah. and definitely write something else for diane and kevin and yeah. uh because they're fantastic yeah yeah thanks so much